Hello, I'm Paul at Pseudosonic.com, and this is an introductory video to the new Roland Phantom O. So you may refer to this as also the Roland Phantom 06, the Phantom 07, or the Phantom 08. But it's not to be confused with just the regular Phantom, or the regular Phantom 6, Phantom 7, or Phantom 8. So that O or that 0 distinguishes those two. It is very similar, though. Also, if you're watching this video on YouTube, I want to let you know that this isn't a complete tutorial lesson. This is just an introductory video that starts off a complete lesson set that is available to purchase on our website, pseudosonic.com. So it's going to be 30 or 40 videos that cover in-depth some of the capabilities and shows you step-by-step -step how to perform many of the different functions and adjust plenty of the parameters and options in this keyboard but in this introductory video what we're going to do is we're going to just talk about some of its capabilities in more of an overview and then we're also going to contrast its capabilities in comparison with other keyboards mostly going to be comparing this keyboard to the flagship Roland Phantom so let's talk about some of those comparisons right off the bat. It is very similar. It has a nice keyboard. It is a different key bed. It still has sliders. It doesn't have quite as many. It still has knobs. It has a color touch screen that's a little bit smaller. A lot of the zone controls, so you still have knobs and sliders. Looks the same. Some of the buttons on the left and right of the screen look the same. You have navigation controls that looks the same. You still get the TR rec recording where you can punch out 16th notes in a measure and record and uh, lay out patterns for recording just like on the retro rolling drum machines. Everyone loved that feature. It's got a sampling pad. You can also trigger other patterns and things like that from the pad. You can also trigger samples from the keyboard just like many other workstations. I would say one of the main control-wise difference with this keyboard is you don't have the envelope controls. So you, the attack, decay, sustain, and release. You had dedicated knobs and buttons for that. And on the Roland Phantom and on the Phantom O series that we have here, you do not have that. So you have to drill down into the menus to access those. Now you do have attack and release over here on the knobs but you don't have a sustain and you don't have a dedicated release so um, a lot of people really like that control so a couple other features too is you'll notice at the bottom depending on what screen you're on we could just navigate through some of these different sounds you can see there's different parameter assignments to these knobs they kind of line up with those and if you click on one that's only using two of those and it's leaving the other four blank you just you don't have any words written there but on the on the screen but on the phantom there were actual lights that lit up around these knobs so you could tell if there was active parameters on those that would be a little bit helpful maybe if you were on stage in a dark setting where you wanted more of a fast feedback of which knob you needed to grab or adjust if you were using that and of course that cut down on cost by just having these blue rings painted to kind of accent the color rather than it being a dynamically lit lights and while we're talking about dynamically lit lights uh, if you look at these sliders over here you know they as soon as you touch them they kind of show what parameter you're adjusting and what the level is on the original phantom or the predecessor to this phantom o this indicator here had individual lights so you could tell where the parameters were before you even touched them so like this one right here it's obviously set to i think it's minus 127 or maybe zero there so if this parameter may have been originally at 66 or something like that so if I just jumped around to a different scene that I was on 
and my slider because it's not a motion driven slider it's not motorized if my slider was all the way down and my value was at 67 there would be a few of the lights lit up here to indicate that it was more than halfway to the top of where the value is before you push the slider up even so that that's kind of a more of a advanced feature that you see on a lot of motorized mixing boards and stuff like that. Also the Korg Oasis had that feature. Um, it's, it was definitely useful. Um, and it's very, it's a lot more expensive because there's just more details in the controls here. Um, so another thing too, that's a little bit more expensive is the sounds that it comes with. So this keyboard still uses the Zencore synthesis system so this is kind of new to Roland it's been out a couple years so the Jupiter X and XM series uses Zencore the Roland Phantom series uses Zencore and now the Roland Phantom O uses Zencore and so the cool thing about Zencore is, is that it can be also used as a VST in a DAW so that means a plug-in can synthesize and play the sound on your keyboard without the computer or without the computer being connected to the keyboard so the cool thing about that is is you can play work out grooves adjust your sounds and then save them and send them to a computer or send them to a friend that's in another state or place in the world and they can upload and use your sounds and then you can share them with other people so that makes that very flexible um, another thing about Zencore is is that you can buy different modules and so they're kind of expensive they're around $150 and you know there's a few of those different that are available um, so those uh, modules the original Phantom had four of those included that the Phantom O does not have so you can still buy them and add them in if you want to um, another thing too is your wave expansion so like if you think about the sounds that a keyboard plays you know it's playing those from PCM sounds that are saved in ROM so um, read-only memory so on the Phantom O series you have a little bit less of those type sounds available than there were in the flagship uh, Phantom so just keep that in mind so there's really not that much differences. The screen's just a little bit bigger on the Roland Phantom. Um, it's still a great screen. You can still see everything in the Phantom O. It's still very useful. Other than that, um, let's talk a little bit how it compares to other keyboards. So you may or may not know this, the Roland Phantom and the Roland Phantom O, neither one of those have a linear sequencer. So what I mean by linear is you can't press record and then play and edit your song like you would on a four track or record, multi-track recorder so there's there's not a start and an end point basically you can't jump to measure 57 and do a punch in recording or anything like that so you can do some sequencing you can create your own songs but you have to build it out of patterns so in these patterns you basically construct different sections of notes that are played over a designated amount of measures and you can combine and layer instruments and different parts in those patterns and then once you have a set of different patterns you can construct and arrange those like you would intro verse chorus so forth and you can lay out songs that way so a lot of drum machines kind of work out that way the Roland MC 505 and 909 series groove boxes work that way. Um, there's other software like Ableton. You can arrange patterns that way. And a lot of other workstations, including the Korg and uh, Yamaha workstations, they all had pattern-based sequencing. But most of the other Korg workstations also have linear sequencers. Um, so that's kind of like a trade-off you'll have to decide on which is best for you the main thing I think Roland is thinking here is that you will work on a few patterns build up a groove kind of get a feel for your song once you get it all going you'll connect via the back panel 
to a computer and you'll just do all of your arranging and working out adjustments and arranging and things like that with your pattern and then you may in your DAW you may record some linear parts like if you have individual lead parts and things like that and for most people the power of computers nowadays many people have laptops that they take out with their gigs their live performances or they take to a studio or anywhere um, it used to not be that easy to do but now with solid solid state computers with powerful processors and cheap RAM um, it's just it's very practical to do that so and then and then also it's there's less and less likelihood that your computer is going to crash like there used to be 10 years ago so I think that's why Roland is kind of working towards that type of workflow so they're not really investing so much in a linear sequencer and you know the and paying their developers to integrate that into a workstation which basically helps bring the cost down of this keyboard and it is significantly cheaper than the Roland Phantom workstation so this concludes the introduction and in the next videos we're going to talk a little bit about navigating sounds and kind of bring some clarity to that feature to you